We're taking back ownership over our own wellness and redefining what is useful. My name is Teresa Kito Dickerson, and I'm on a mission to change the conversation around the standard of acceptable. We're disrupting the way products are consumed and the ideas that we are in charge of our own wellness. Through connecting to community and professionals, we're clearing the path to live organically. This is an organic journey. today's guest. She's a wellness warrior winner, suffering from migraine, stress, and weight issues for most of her life. Today's guest was able to turn her life around through natural organic living, living a wholesome life after spending most of her time curled up in a ball due to pain. Our guest decided to leave her cloud of migraines that had affected her health and jump into finding her motivation, energy, and sense of self. Reevaluating her lifestyle, she was able to finally own her own wellness, and alongside her bachelor's in science, she got certified as a coach in five wellness modalities, ketogenic, ketosis, holistic wellness and stress, using her experience to drive her to share the message to living a migraine-free life. It is my honor to introduce owner and wellness coach of Encouragement Wellness, Michelle Brewer. Thank you for being here, Michelle. Thank you. It's a pleasure being on your show. Awesome. Thank you so much. So before we jump right in, I just want to say that I saw that you were a canine trainer for volunteer fire and rescue. Can you tell us how, like, where that, how that started? Well, I have always wanted to give back and to help, even when I was a kid. And I love dogs. I've had dogs my whole life. And so um, one day my husband and I were sitting down, and at that point I had a little Rottweiler puppy, which is my third Rottweiler. I love Rottweilers. <laughs> and um, we're just talking, like, you know, I've always wanted to be a canine handler for search and rescue team. I've always wanted to be that. And he's like, really? Me too. And so we talked about it and we searched around here and there was a team two hours away from us. And so, well, there's actually two teams, both of them were two hours away. So we contacted them and went down and went to see one of their trainings and we loved it. Totally loved it. And so we started training the Rottweiler. My Rottweiler's name is Stormy when she's not in trouble, when she's working or in trouble, it's Storm. So I'm going to call her Storm for this story. So we started training Storm and, um, we needed another dog, obviously, because, you know, my husband didn't have one. So we searched around on Border Collie websites for rescues because my husband had a Border Collie when he was a kid that he loved and he always talked about her. So I searched through the Border Collie rescues. We were looking for the certain type of rescue and we found Annie. And so we adopted Annie and we started training them. And it's about two years worth of work to train. Wow. A, a, a dog for search and rescue. And in the meantime, when we were doing that, a team form more locally to us that's only about 30 minutes away and so we are now with that team and my rottweiler is certified in trailing and she does area search as well so she can actually trail where somebody has walked or we mostly use her for area search because i can let her offline and we can clear about 50 acres in about 10 minutes and i can tell you if somebody is in that 50 acres so when time is of the essence we can take care of a whole lot of area Wow. And then our border collie is actually a level three certification HRD dog. So she follows up if somebody is deceased and we still need, you know, we still need to give the family closure. Um, but she is actually one of the top level certified dogs in the United States at this point. And uh, we certified the Georgia canine, which certifies uh, worldwide. So, I mean, it's a huge organization that did our certifications. And wow. then because, you know, we don't have enough to do. We were training one day uh, last September, right before certifications, by the way. Right. And we stopped at Petco because they had adoptions out there. And we always uh-huh. get the dogs going to Petco as fun for working hard. And there was these puppies out there. We can leave all the puppies. Trust me. Well, sure. there was one, though, that caught my husband's attention. And he called me over there and she's playing with the water, totally ignoring everything, ignoring this big Rottweiler coming by and our border collie. And my husband's like, she would make a perfect search and rescue dog. I'm like, you know, she would. And then we left. Two days later, my husband's in the middle of Walmart and he's like, I really shouldn't say this, Michelle, but I can't get that puppy out of my mind. Like wow. me either. So I'm on the phone with Petco immediately saying, who is that rescue that was there? tracked him down. And that's when we got our German short haired pointer three days after that. And she is one of the most awesome trailing dogs I have ever seen. Her nose is fantastic. And we'll be doing certifications coming up. Um, She still has a year out on her training, Mm -hmm. but we're aiming for top certifications on trailing for her. And uh, we have, uh, so 
that's how we got into it. And that's how we ended up with three dogs. Wow. And we won't be getting any more dogs. Just to clarify. Right. Don't go to Petco during pet adoption day. (laughs) Now, normally I can leave the dogs behind. For some reason, Rowdy just caught our attention. Well, serendipitous. um, She's perfect. And she's amazing at what she does. So we um, have three dogs in search and rescue. And that's how it happened. That is adorable. I love that. Well, oh, serendipitous. You were supposed to go that day and get your baby. (laughs) Exactly. We were definitely meant for her because most search and rescue dogs do not make good house pets because they are a high drive, high energy dog, and they need a job. And we found out that Rowdy had actually been returned that day after a two week trial because they didn't want her because she just was not a good house pet. And I can tell you now, if we don't work our dogs, they are crappy house pets. But they are fantastic working dogs. And if we work our dogs, they are very happy dogs, very content dogs, and very good house pets. But they don't make a good house pet because of the personality we need. Like my Rottweiler will work for an hour to two hours, constantly looking to find somebody for summer sausage. So unless you've got this high drive, it's not going to work. So, you know, we have to have, we have to have that. And so if you have a dog that just wants to sit on the home on the couch with you, don't get a search and rescue dog. Yeah, not a search and rescue. Right. Oh, that's interesting. That's good to know. I never even thought, because like I and we talked about before, I like uh, labs and they're high energy dogs anyways. Yes. So it never occurred to well, me. Well, you can get probably, some labs that are calm, but. Yeah, I've never had one. <laughs> but it never occurred to me. He probably <laughs> no, me I grew up with labs. To, yeah, they probably just need to get worked. So that makes sense. That makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, they need a job. They need a job. So, you know, now. you can look at agility, you can look at obedience, you don't have to do search and rescue, but all those types of dogs just need a job. Need something to do. And then they're right. happy. Oh, little puppies. Mm-hmm. All right, it's good to know. And just like your um, tip that you had earlier about the little the pet, the, um, what do you call it? The little pad thingies. Yeah, I'm going to, yes. I'm setting up my, I'm setting up my strategy now to get this dog <laughs> in this house. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see but thank you for sharing that that's really really cool so along with being a puppy mom who's training canine search and rescue dogs um you yourself have an inspiring story one that i'm sure like resonates with people who are suffering from chronic migraines and even your website says that you um you know we're just done just worrying about your weight loss worrying about you know being in pain and you know and just decided that you were going to just be a wellness coach. Um, so that, and then from there you became a wellness coach. So like, how did that happen? Like, what was that transition? What was that journey? Well, how that happened is my husband and I first were looking at diets, obviously, cause you know, that's what Americans do. Right. And uh, especially yeah. women. <laughs> yeah. And um, I found the ketogenic diet and I started researching it. And um, because I do have the scientific background, I was looking at the science behind it. Because right. I've been there, I've done that. And, and if you listen to any of you know, are you in my group, I've told you I used to be the gym junkie. I used to be the <laughs> strict 1,200 calorie diet, but it was poor food choices that came along with it. Yeah. So I was then there, in the, and I was over that. I, I I admit it was not a healthy situation, and I was done, and I wasn't going to go back to that. So I was researching the ketogenic diet and the science behind that diet really resonated with me. And um, the brain health that went along with that really spoke to me because I'm very invested in brain health. Yes, I have migraines. I am the first one to say it. Migraines are something that is non-curable, but are manageable. And then on top of that, because of my mom, Um, my mom's had a stroke and my mom also has had brain surgery or a brain aneurysm. Mm-hmm. And she is now on seizure medication for seizures that came along from the stroke. Um, my grandfather on the other side of my family actually died of a brain aneurysm the same month my mom had surgery. So I'm looking at all of this, wow. not just for my mom, but for my own brain. You know, I need to take care of my brain. Right. And so I'm looking at all it and the science was sound. And I thought, okay, I will do this because one, it'd be nice to lose several pounds and two, the right. brain health really spoke to me and I knew it wasn't a bad, poor diet like I had done before. So my husband and I started on it because he's fantastic and says, absolutely, I'll do it with you because, you know, let's do this. And so we started on that. And so, you know, I'm doing the ketogenic diet and the weight's dropping. My blood sugar, I went from being pre-diabetic to not diabetic at all. And I had gestational diabetes. So I was always been told 
It's a matter of when, not if I get diabetes. Wow. Okay. It also runs on both sides of my family. So right. I'm pretty much genetically disposed to it's going to happen. And right. my blood sugar has been slowly creeping up and creeping up and creeping up for a long time. Right. And so I'm watching my blood sugar start to go down and the normal blood sugars. And I, the weight is fantastic, you know, it was going down too. But the brain health is where I was invested in. Wow. And so I started telling my mom about it. I'm like, mom, you really need to do this. Do this. Talk to your doctor. See, you know, get his approval, obviously, right. because I am not a doctor. And I, right. even with my mom, I said, talk to your doctor first. Right. And so sure. she talked to the doctor and he's like, yes, your daughter's right. You need to do this. And so she started on it. And so I was helping her. And then my sister started on the ketogenic diet. And I was helping her. And, you know, anyone that asked me, I was like, yeah, I was telling them all about it because the health that came with it was fantastic. Right. And then one day my husband, you know, bless his heart. He's the one who comes up with all the fantastic ideas. He's like, Michelle, you know, you need to be a health coach. You help people all the time with this. You are really good at it. You should do that. And right. as soon as he said that, it was like, that's what I meant to do for my whole life. I want to help people. It's just, I had never put the pieces together and he did. Right. So I immediately started researching, okay, what do I need to do? And so I started going to school and taking classes and doing all of this stuff and learning all of the business end of it. And because I'm also an accountant, so, you know, I do accounting. So the math side of it was good, but the technology side of it and the business side right. of marketing, it's all stuff I've never done before. Right. Building a website was definitely not something I was ever in my wheelhouse, yeah. but the health and science part of it was fascinating and amazing. And being able to actually help people which I want to do anyway, but to be able to do that full time, it was just like, that's exactly what I've been meant to do my whole life. It's just, I didn't know. Right. And thankfully my husband figured it out. Thank God for husbands. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, who knows what I'd be doing, you know, I'd be less busy, but right. You know, I wouldn't be helping people and I love to help people. And you know, when you're doing the things that you love to do, the passion behind it is more important. Sometimes you don't even, you know, and you, time sort of comes because you're, you know I'm saying to you mm -hmm. when you're trying to do when you're doing what you really love right exactly. like it goes faster if you're enjoying it and things like that well that is one heck of a journey like I, it's really inspiring um when you decided to narrow down to ketosis and um ketogenic how exactly what, what's that correlation between that and migraines very good questions Migraines actually come about from a mismatch of your foods. So it's foods that are triggers to the brain. And there's a standard list of foods that you, we look at originally, mm -hmm. but it also comes from sugar. Sugar mm -hmm. causes inflammation in the body. Um, one of the best things I describe people is every sugar molecule you have floating in your body attracts 100 water molecules. So picture that inflammation wise. Well, right. you also have that inflammation in your brain. Right. Blood sugar swings cause migraines, can cause triggers. Um, high blood sugars, usually you're associating that with headaches as well. So sugar and blood sugar is a direct association with migraines. And unless you've got your blood sugar under control, you're not going to get your migraines under control because it's going to cause that fluctuations. And sometimes when your blood sugar is dropping, you have this desire to eat whatever. Usually it's a high carb sugared food because your body is saying your sugar is dropping. You've got to fix that. And unfortunately, half the time you choose the foods that are migraine triggers because that's what's there because you right. just got to eat something and then your sugar goes up and then your sugar drops a whole lot worse and it tanks again and, and you're in that vicious cycle again, next migraine hits. And a lot of times you're craving sugars and stuff when you're having migraine triggers because your body is saying, I'm starving. I need sugar. Well, on a ketogenic diet, your body is not running off of sugar. It's running off of fat. And actually fat is actually what heals your brain. So your body never feels that blood sugar drop. Your body never doesn't have those swings. Your, body, your blood sugar stays leveled. So you're not having that vicious cycle in your brain. And the ketogenic diet actually has been shown to heal brains. I mean, there's so many fantastic studies out there about how, uh, for example, in the 1920s is when the ketogenic diet first came out and it was given to children with epilepsy where medicine did not control that epilepsy. Wow. So they put them on this diet. The family went on a strict diet, all of the families in the study. And what they found is all of a sudden these children who were having between 200 and 300 epileptic seizures a day had none, none. And when you have seizures, your brain gets damaged every time you have a seizure, it's killing brain cells. 
So most uh, epileptic patients have a brain that if you look at it, it would be like a pitted prune. It, it looks bad. Well, those people in the 1920s that were on this ketogenic diet stayed on it. When they came off, their seizures came back. When they came back on, their seizures stopped. They're now dying of old age and doing autopsies on these patients from the 1920s, their brains look like a normal, healthy brain that has had no seizures. And there was actually studies in the 1930s with migraines and the ketogenic diet. Unfortunately, those studies didn't get published until about 20 years ago. But they actually did studies on migraine patients and found that either migraine day, migraines don't go by how many migraines, they go by migraine days. That's what we talk about. How many migraine days you have a month is the rule of thumb here because it's never going to go away. Migraine is a condition. Migraine is not just a random thing that happens. I will always have migraine my whole life. It's just how many migraine days do I have? Yeah. Well, this study shows that when they went on a ketogenic diet, the migraine days either cut in half or went away completely. And the days they actually had a migraine were significantly less pain in those days and went away faster when they were on this ketogenic diet because they've stabilized their blood sugars. So, I mean, it's amazing health. So that's why, yes, I will help people with other diets. Um, there are several other diets out there that are fantastic. But if you want the knockout punch for migraines, let's look at keto. Let's look at keto. Oh, wow. I know a friend of mine, um, and I interviewed her for this series as well. She ended up losing 137 pounds from keto. So mm -hmm. to know that the keto diet has all of these different health benefits, it's like, it's, yes. it, and, and like you, you were talking about, it's fueling from fat. And, you know, a lot of us have extra fat to burn. So right. why not use it? Right? Why not use it? For exactly. Something? Why not use it? That's actually how your body was built was... If you look back before food was so readily available, the right. fat stores were designed to fuel your body when food sources were not available. Well, unfortunately, these days, food sources are available, but our body hasn't changed. Right. It still stores it's for when there's no available. So might as well tap into it. Right. So yeah, I, mean, I always tell my body, I'm like, and actually your body hungry. runs better and you don't run out of energy. Right. Yeah, I've always, I always tell my body, I'm like, you're not hungry. You've got tons of stores. Just start going for that. Exactly. It doesn't listen to me, but yeah. <laughs> right. But unless you've switched your, you actually have to switch your cells from burning sugar, which is easy, easy fuel. It's um, right. like burning leaves on a campfire. Your body right. actually has to take time to convert all the mitochondria to actually be able to burn fat, which is a normal process. It's just that has to be turned on. And so there is a little bit of a transition period, but once that happens and you, it's called being keto adapted, you can switch back and forth between sugar and between fat. But if you're looking at migraines, you don't really want to switch back to the sugar. Right. Now, if you're doing it for weight loss, that's a whole different ball game, but I'm, you know, I'm looking at health. So. Right. From a, a very, from a wellness point of view. That, and that makes sense because a lot of this is a lot of times, you know, while we want to lose weight, uh, I like how we're, we're starting to shift to this concept of we want to be healthy, right? That way we're mm -hmm. not looking at the numbers on the scale. We're not looking at like inches. We're right. like, are, can, you know, can you breathe going up and down the stairs? Like, can you exactly a normal amount of time? Can you alleviate your migraines? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like now that we're focusing right. more on, on health, I think the weight, like you said, the body's designed to do it. So it'll eventually do it anyway. So my just right. And I tell my patients, I tell my clients all the time, you know, you're going to lose weight once you get healthy. So let's talk about the healthy. Let's right. not worry about the weight. It will come, but right. your body has to be healthy first to be able to even work. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Well, that, and, and, you know, one of the reasons why I started doing this is because of me wanting to manage my pain from my, from my, um, my illness diagnosis. And I have noticed that other things started to fall in line. Um, and you know, I'm not going to, well, I call this an organic journey because I'm like, I'm not like, woohoo, I, I made it. Like, I think it's a consistent, right. it's, it's a journey. Like it's not, I don't, it'd be great to just like one day wake up and be like my ideal weight and never have any issues. But like being realistic, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? But, but realistic, exactly. I mean, you, know, you look at, I will have migraine the rest of my life. Right. My goal is to have so many less migraine days than I used to have and to have none if I can. But I know if I go off what I know works for me, it'll be right back and I'll have another flare up of migraines. And I'm just not going to do that. Right. You know, you know, I still have migraine days, but they're a whole lot less than they used to be. They used to be and that's usually right. because, you know, I went off what I need to do. Right. And, and you and know, I knew it was coming. 
it's great that our bodies can tell us that give us that 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 um that point you're like hey look you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing so this is what happened mm -hmm. I think once you're educated in what's happening with your body and, and the science behind it you know you're you're quickly able to revert back to the things that you're supposed to be doing so and that was one of the questions yeah. I had for you was about the science so what is happening like what's happening in the brain right like with the with the migraines like what what's going on with migraines what happens with let me explain a little bit about migraine brains are a little different than normal people's brains there's a lot more receptors in there and a lot more activity that goes on so and because of that a lot of things can flare up and what happens is some migraines are caused because there is a, a, a rapid dilation of the blood vessels and then a constriction of the blood vessels so if you look at normal medications there's migraine medications out there that actually cause constriction because it's causing that to go back to normal after the swell Right. But what happens is all those receptors are hypersensitive. So that's why so many things can trigger migraine. You know, there's, there's ones that are barometric pressure. Just the change in the barometric pressure and the change of the sinus pressure is going to cause one of those receptors to flare off. Right. And when those receptors flare off, that's what triggers the migraine. So you're trying to keep all of those receptors happy and all of them calm and try not to um, a really good way to describe it is, um, which I just actually put a newsletter out last month was my migraine month, is picture to this bucket. You have a bucket. Every morning you wake up in your bucket, and it's how full is your bucket for the day. Um, right. That is your migraine bucket. When your bucket overflows, you're going to have a migraine. Those are the receptors in your brain. How many receptors are flared for right now? So, and then you look at, okay, my bucket's pretty full today. I probably don't need to trigger any more of those nerve receptors because I'm going to have a migraine day. Or, oh, you know, I've been really good with what I'm eating lately. I've been really good exercising, uh, managing my stress. My, you know, even though it's thundering outside and I get storms from thunder, my bucket's about half full then. Okay, well, then I might be able to handle this food that might cause me a trigger because my bucket's not going to overflow with that. And that's all those receptors is you're trying to gauge how active are each receptor every day because every day is a brand new day. Right. What do I need to do to reduce those receptors from flaring or to not cause those receptors to flare? And so it's, it's just the, you learn how full is your migraine bucket and what fills your bucket. Because sometimes throwing that little pebble of something is gonna cause it to overflow, or sometimes you can throw a huge rock in and it's still not gonna overflow right. because your bucket was low that day. And that's where it's really hard to figure out, and that's where I come in. I help you figure out how, what fills your bucket. That makes sense. So it's, um, and so what's filling, what it going in the bucket is the, is the, I guess the stresses of the day. And you, you do talk about right stresses of the day. You're looking, you know, you're looking at the weather. Um, a lot of people either get migraines from stormy days, in which our barometric pressure changes. Mm -hmm. um, too hot, being out in the sun, um, heat, getting too hot. You know, I, I live in Texas. It is probably 97 outside right now. Um, you know, I can't control that. I can stay inside if that's one of my triggers. Thankfully, it's not because I can't control when I get called out on a call. Right. But for me, thunderstorms, getting migraines. So on those days where I'm looking at ahead at the weather, I know, okay, my bucket's going to be a little full for the next several days. I probably shouldn't eat one of the things I know that cause a trigger for me. Or, you know, I know my bucket's going to be full of that day, so I need to be extra careful. Okay, so that's what so it So that's where it is. So that sort of brings me to my next question. And mm -hmm. the next question was around, um, like, what steps, like, what, what steps a per, what should a person take to start managing their wellness um, in this way? And so it sounds to me like paying attention to what what's happening around them, right? Like the environment, um, the, the weather, mm -hmm. um, what basically what their calendar might look like, things like that to see yeah. where, where their bucket potentially might be, right? Like we don't know what's going to happen during the beginning of the day, but you can sort of start to like calculate like, okay, well, it's going to be raining and I've got three mm -hmm. meetings and one's with my boss. So I'm not going to eat this particular food that I know is a trigger. Is that is right? That yeah. So, so um, some good things you can do is there is a free app out there called Migraine Buddy. Um, you can actually set it for your triggers and it has the, some of the standard triggers or you can add and it'll actually help you guess. 
um, what it is. And you actually log your migraines in there as well. You can log, okay, it started this, um, you know, I think it might be this, how intense is the pain? It actually pulls up your barometric pressure. And one of the great things about that is you can print out the reports for your neurologists and for your doctors or your health coaches like me. Right. And you can print out the reports from that. And so that's one thing you can do. Another thing is, you know, look at, you know, do you know stress causes you migraines? I know when I have a really high stressful day, I have to work very hard and stay level because I will have a migraine if my bucket's pretty full. I know that. So I, I can also look at that and say, okay, you know, I know I have this meeting with my boss. Um, it's going to be raining for the next two days. And then I know for a fact, for me, I know um, like cow's milk gives me migraines. Mm -hmm. I can't eat cheese that has cow's milk. I can't have regular milk that has cow's milk. I can't. I will get a migraine within four hours. I know that. So that's, that's like a boulder in my bucket. So I know, okay, if I already know I'm having stress for my boss, it's raining for the next two days. There's no way I should even attempt a slice of pizza, for example, keto right. pizza, pizza, obviously, right. but I should not even attempt a slice of pizza that has this cheese on it because I know it's just, it's pretty much overflows my bucket to start with. There's no way I want to knock myself out for the next two days with a migraine, with a migraine. or I know caramel coloring gives me migraines. Well, I've had a really stressful day, so I probably shouldn't have that barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce is caramel color. I know I probably shouldn't do that because my bucket's pretty full already. Or, you know, I know my, you know, it's a sunny day. It's the weekend. I'm having a great weekend. You know, ah, those ribs, I could probably handle a rib with a little bit of barbecue sauce because right. I know it's going to be like a pebble in my bucket today that's not going to overflow. Okay. But start with Migraine Buddy and start tracking every day. How do you feel? What was the weather conditions um, in log every day? How are you feeling? And look back when you get a migraine, look back for two to three days and see what happened. Because it can take up to two days for a food trigger to actually cause a migraine. Oh, really? So you need to look back at least two days. For me, I know like caramel coloring, I'm looking at about 12 hours. I will feel it within about 12 hours and I, you can really figure out which food it was. Um, milk, I know is four hours. But there's other stuff that can take up to 24 hours to 48 hours to cause a migraine trigger. Because it's just taking that long to slowly finish filling up your bucket because food doesn't leave your system for 48 hours. So it's sitting in the bottom of your bucket, you know, like sludge in the bottom of your bucket. Right. And it's going to take time for that sludge to wash out. So you need to look back 24 to 48 hours and see what you ate and what was the weather conditions. Because it just took time to fill all those receptors up and fire them and see oh. what filled your bucket up. So what, how, okay, so... Some of the things that you're saying, because um, one of the things I was mentioning at the beginning of this was that I, yesterday, had like the world's worst night, and I don't, they, I have migraines, but not, I have them enough to, to be able to label them as migraines and not just like a random headache, mm -hmm. but not enough of their like daily, right. I'd ever really taken a deeper dive like what you're saying, but now that you're sort of talking about like cheese, I'm lactose intolerant. I shouldn't eat that anyways, but I love cheese and ice cream. Oh yeah. So is my husband and one of my sons. It's right. Fun. You know, but I mean, but you know, cheese is so good. So I already know I shouldn't be eating that, but I had a lot of cheese the day before we had pizza and it did rain. Well, it's, it was about to rain. It rained last night. So mm -hmm. now, and like I said, I have them enough that that I, I know what they are, but I haven't taken the dive like right. I'm talking about right now. How do you identify those things that could trigger? Because honestly, like I, I the, yesterday was a wash, which is why I was so like late today with everything. I didn't get a chance to prep because I just, I couldn't, right? So how do I, how can mm -hmm. I know? Oh, I understand. <laughs> like, how can I know what my triggers are? Okay. So like, I didn't know. So what I would suggest to you is like pull up my green buddy and you're going to log. I ate cheese. I ate cheese and then it actually, to my great buddy will actually has this fantastic little feature where it says, okay, tell me what you guess. And you push on one of the triggers and it'll say, I estimate this has a 70% chance of being one of your triggers because it logs what you ate. And so uh, cheese, for the example, has tyramine in it. Tyramine is what causes the age feature of it. And age cheese is one of the triggers of migraines. It's one of those chemicals. So, um, you know, you can look at if it was the cheese. And by the way, did you know, and this is just for information, migraine, actually there's stomach migraines as well. Really? That it might feel like lactose intolerance symptoms, but it's actually a migraine that's occurring in the stomach. Okay. Just in okay. case, I thought I'd throw that there. So sometimes you might be saying it's a lactose intolerance problem, but you might be feeling your migraine in your stomach and not in your head. It's oh my most gosh. people don't know that. That is crazy. I'm going to, so that's going to be my Google thing for today. Um, <laughs> look that up. So yeah, down, Migraine Buddy is free. Um, they do have pro features, but Migraine Buddy is free on iPhones as well as Android phones. Mm -hmm. And it is a fantastic app. And that's one of the things, or if you aren't really tech savvy, 
um, just start writing a journal, you know, get a, get a planner and write what your food at, was out. And at the bottom, write how you felt every day, you know, rate it from one to 10 on the migraine scale. You know, how did you feel? 10 being you're at the hospital getting your migraine cocktail. One versus you feel fantastic. Two is, oh, it's, you know, just not quite at the par. Three, you know, and, and have, have a scale that you set for yourself so you can not forget what your scale is and just write it down. If you don't want to use migraine, buddy, that's fine. It's just fantastic and free. Right. But if you're not tech savvy, because I have had clients that are not tech savvy, right. so just write it down. Right. And we will go look back and see, you know, and that's exactly. probably some of the work is I'll start looking at the graphs and say, okay, you know, like right. every time you felt like a five, you ate cheese within the last 48 hours. Right. Let's look at what kind of cheese. Oh, I'm just saying, man, did you know there's two cheeses that are lactose free naturally? We're just like throw that out there too. There's a uh, Jarlsberg cheese is naturally lactose free. Um, and it does work really great on pizza. It milks like mozzarella. Um, I do know this because my son is lactose intolerant. And then the other cheese is Le Gros cheese, which is a Swiss cheese. And it's a little bit stronger than, uh, it's more like a, um, like a Swiss cheese. It is a Swiss cheese. You know, one, the one, the whole, it's a version of Swiss cheese, but it's naturally lactose free. And it melts really good and tastes good on other stuff. So just to throw that out there for you. And you can buy those both at Walmart. Oh, well, and there you go. So that makes perfect because that's the grocery store that's probably everywhere. That makes sense. So when you mm -hmm. talked about, so... I want to get back to this correlation between the stress trigger, like stress and, um, and the migraines and, and from what, mm -hmm. during this whole like journey, I've also found that like stress just triggers so much other health issues. Like stress just happens to be like, oh, absolutely. you know, what would you say your strategy is for managing the stress, managing stress to be able to get yourself to this, this area where you're able to like manage your, your stress receptors. I mean, your uh, migraine receptors. Um, you know, as a stress management coach, I actually help you figure out what's causing the stress behind your stress. What is the brain thought process? But in the front end, you still got to get rid of it. So um, some ways, um, exercise is a fantastic way to reduce your stress. Um, it gives you some me time. It gives you some endorphins, which also help you feel better. Um, my, that also helps with migraines too, by the way, yeah. is um, doing some exercise. Um, so that's one way. Um, yoga is fantastic for reducing stress. I uh, love yoga for stress. And um, because it also is really good for migraines, there's actually specific right. yoga for migraines, but is a really good way to just calm down your thought process and calm down with the stresses and just get some body movement in as well. Right. And half the time, nobody is really good at yoga. And so you're so busy concentrating on how to do yoga and not fall all over. You're right. not thinking about the stress anymore. And then you feel better at the end. Right. You're like, so, uh, and then obviously mindful meditation is fantastic. Um, but you know, there's, there's other ways. Uh, one of my favorite ways I suggest people at the very beginning, if they start with the stress management program with me is right. I tell them to go home and take a bubble bath, put in some lavender oil, some Epsom salt, because Epsom salt is magnesium mm -hmm. and it, magnesium was a few things you can actually absorb through your skin. And usually migraines are triggered by low magnesium as well. And if you take as enough magnesium as you need, you're going to make yourself sick. So, you know, what a better way. Take a lot of pills, get sick, or go soak in a little bath. I mean, yeah. there's not a, really a choice here for me. Go put some Epsom salt in, put some fantastic bubbles in, throw in some lavender oil, because lavender oil is a great stress relief, great yep. calming. And enjoy some me time in the bubble bath. Right. And I would say just... Don't let your dogs in. Um, I don't know about you, but my dogs definitely would not make that a calm experience. You know, if you've got kids, tell right. them mama needs a break. Right. And just, that is a fantastic way. You're feeding your brain. You're giving yourself some magnesium, which is fantastic. And you're also calming down at the same time and relaxing because all of that water is going to be a good sensory relaxation at the same time. And so I say, go take a bubble bath with Epsom salt and lavender oil. And that's a great way to reduce stress and a very good way. Otherwise, find a hobby that you love and make a point of doing it because when you're doing something that you thoroughly enjoy, and unfortunately we are such a busy society, we don't do a lot of relaxation activities or hobbies. Make a point of doing a hobby again, take some time and set it. If you have to schedule it, schedule it right? and make a point of doing a hobby because that's when you are feeling those pleasure uh, sensations coming on from doing the activity you want. And it's going to reduce your stress level naturally because you're doing something you actually enjoy and make right. a point of doing a hobby. And, that, and that's a good point. I think a lot of times people forget that, you know, 
with that me time, that sort of recentering on themselves, that allows you to de-stress naturally. Because you know, when you start doing the things mm-hmm. that you enjoy, like you mentioned, those those um, the, releasing those endorphins, like that's you know, that's like a, a natural way to sort of le- start leveling off your yeah. body. So I, I that thank you for sharing that cause, and, and reemphasizing that. I think throughout all of this, it's being reemphasized a lot, and I think you know. Thus, our society is so focused on do, 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 do. And like, you know, us, right. this COVID thing has been, that's one of the blessings in disguise that's happened is we've had to stop do, do, doing, and we've had to stop. And we had to stop. We had to start like just being with ourselves a little bit because there's not as much interaction. Yeah. And, and we, and, you oh, know. That's actually, that's one of the few things I'm very thankful for about this whole COVID-19 thing is it has forced people to actually take a break yeah. because it just doesn't happen, but they're being forced to, they don't have a choice. Yeah. And by not having a choice, what a way to help your health in the process. I know, right? Like it's, it's almost as if nature knew we all needed to just chill out for five seconds, you know, and unfortunately it had to be such a drastic thing that, that made us. Think yeah, that, exactly. You know, but let, you know, but for those of us that can try to see the, 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 you know, make lemonades out of this lemon, like this, we should definitely be thankful, you know, along with our health is to be, you know, thankful that we have this opportunity. Um, so I have a question. So mm-hmm. let's talk about what it is that you do for your clients. You mentioned it several times and you, um, I want you to start advocating for it, right? Like you, you, your story, what you do and the education that you've been able to acquire is no better advocate for what is ha- what you're able to accomplish through um, through stress and migraine management for wellness? Uh, so give me your elevator pitch. I am, you know, just like, oh, what do you do? Like, you know, and I just told you the story about how I just had this horrible this horrible migraine. Like, oh, well, what do you do? Like, what would what do you say to people? What I tell people is, you know, I tell people I'm a blood sugar migraine stress management coach, and they're like, well, what do you mean by that? What it is, is I sit down and say, okay, what is it you want? And I can tell you, most people tell me, I want to have more migraine-free days than I've ever had before. It's okay, well, this is what I can do for you. Let's sit down. We're going to look at everything you do lifestyle-wise. We're going to look at every food you eat. And together, we're going to come up with a plan to tackle each one of those things that's your goal, your ideal life when you're feeling perfect. Let's look at that. And we're going to make a plan. You know, I, yeah, I have, I have a format and, you know, steps that are planned, but right. it is personalized to just you because everybody is different. And I have these standard things we're going to look at, but I'm not going to give you a standard plan. Right. You know, it's just, I, for you. So we're going to look at, okay, what's, let's talk about your stress. Okay. If you are dealing with stress and stress is a huge migraine. Okay, we're going to run through a stress management program. We're going to knock that stress out of there. At the same time, we're going to look at your foods that's going on because migraines is everything that fills your bucket. So what is filling your bucket? So you're going to be, I'm going to help you track and we're going to look at it together. And because my goal is to teach you how to live. You don't need me the rest of your life. You right. have to live the rest of your life. Right. I'm going to get you there. And so you don't need me anymore. I am not one of those coaches that's going to try and hang you on for the rest of your life. No, because I didn't do my job. My right. job is to get you past me and having a fantastic right. life. Right. So we're going to look at your life. We're going to look at your stress. We're going to look at your foods. We're going to look at your lifestyle. We're going to look at what is causing your stress behind that. And we're going to fix the thinking behind your stress. If you're feeling really stressed at work and you're really feeling hard at, you know, I'm really excelling at work, but I'm feeling very stressed for my family. My family's giving me a lot of stress about this because I'm working so hard. Well, what's the mindset behind that? Why are you feeling like that? Right. Let's fix that because you won't feel the stress. Because obviously you don't, can't leave your job unless you absolutely need to. Right. You might love your job. So why is your family giving you stress? Well, right. let's look at the thinking behind that. So we're going to look at what's causing the stress, not just let's fix the stress. Because you can fix it. It's going to come back the next day, you know, right. honestly. So we're going to look at what's behind the stress. And for your migraines, we're going to look at the foods that are behind the migraines. And we're going to start looking at a list of foods and come up with a plan and, uh, of, okay, let's look at these foods. These are the things you need to be conscious of. If you want to try and eliminate them, I am not going to tell you to eliminate them. That's completely up to you because I am a not dietitian. I can recommend 
These are common migraine fades. This is what it looks like for you. It is your choice, your right. life, your choice. I am here as a coach to walk with you and take you by the hand and guide you along the way. But if you think of a basketball team, the coach isn't out there on the field in the middle of the game shooting right. baskets. No, they're on the sidelines telling the players what to do because they've taught them what to do. That's right. me. I'm going to teach you. Okay, here's our standard migraine space. Let's look at it for you. Let's let you figure it out. And right. let's also look at your lifestyle and look at what you need to do to correct your lifestyle. And let me teach you what you can do. And if right. you are ready to make that next step and you are ready to have some fantastic migraine free days and you are willing to listen to me and to be willing and open to try what I suggest. And more importantly, if you're willing to be honest with yourself and honest with me, if you screw up, we're going to have a fantastic time. You are going to love being in my program and you're going to feel so much better on the other side. Well, that, and, and that's where I come from. So well, I, I meant to ask you this earlier. What are some of the roadblocks that people find once they decide they made the decision that they're going to get on this wellness journey, get on this path to migraine free to more migraine free days? What are some of the roadblocks and like, what are, and, and how would a person avoid them? Um, some of the roadblocks might be is it's a favorite food. You know, they know it's causing migraines, but eventually they're going to hit the point that they don't really care. They don't want it anymore. But some of the, the blocks are, is this not just one trigger? It's a bucket. So we need to figure out everything that's filling out their bucket. So they think, oh, chocolate, for example, is one of the ones that's a big hot topic with migraines. Chocolate is a migraine stressor. Well, but I ate chocolate last week and I didn't get a migraine, but I ate it today and I had a migraine that's one of the blocks is trying to figure out what it is because it's not just one thing. You know, last week your bucket might have been full, you ate chocolate and you pushed it over the top. Mm -hmm. This week, your bucket's, you know, sitting pretty low. You ate some chocolate, it's not going to overflow your bucket, you're not going to have a migraine. Right. So that's one of the blocks is trying to figure out. They're like a lot of people look at migraines as a single food or a single trigger. What what caused the single trigger, you know, the day before that caused me to have this migraine today, not at what were all the triggers that filled my bucket up that caused me to have the migraine today? You know, yeah, there might've been something that pushed it over the top, but if we can lower the things that are in your bucket, you don't have to worry about the one thing that pushed it over the top. So that's one obstacle is the other obstacle is, is sometimes they're just not willing to be honest with themselves right. and say, okay, I know for a fact, let's take me for example, cow's milk gives me migraines. I know that. If I'm not willing to tell myself, yeah, I know if I eat that, um, let's say Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. I know I love Parmesan cheese. I can't have it, but I love it. If I'm not honest with myself saying, yeah, Parmesan cheese really is giving me a headache. So I really need to cut up that Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. There's no point. So that's another obstacle is they're not willing to accept that fact. Um, another obstacle is, is they're just have no idea where to start. They're hurting so bad. Their brain is just not thinking good and they just don't know what to do. They just know I hurt. I don't feel good. I'm tired of not feeling good. And unfortunately depression is actually suicide rates with migraines is really high because they're just trying to get rid of the pain in their head. Yeah. Um, my husband got me a shirt for my birthday that says migraines. The only time taking a hammer to your head sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And honestly, I have actually thought about that, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, not it's, like, it's it like an arm You're being just, hurt. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to ice it to numb it. Like, it's your head. You can't, like, right. it's your head. Yeah. It's your yeah. head. And it, it, and it gets to you. It really gets to you. So yeah. that's another obstacle is they're so focused on the pain, they really can't see the future. They can't see days without migraines. And they can't see what to do to get there. They don't know because it just hurts so bad. Yeah. And I know because I've been there. And I, I know those days. And um, like I had a migraine for a year and a half. Um, turns out it was caramel coloring. Well, at that time, I drank a ton of Diet Coke. We're talking like four to five a day. Oh, um, and I was having Diet Coke to help with my migraines because of the caffeine. So, you know, I'm like triggering it every day. Triggering. And um, it was hard to admit a drink I really liked, Diet Coke, which now I don't even touch the stuff. Yeah. Um, it's hard to admit that that was it, but I had no idea for a year and a half. If I had known for a year and a half, I would have cut that stuff out a long time ago. Yeah. I had no idea what to do because I just knew my brain hurt and I didn't know what to do. I just knew I couldn't take it any longer. 
I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what was causing it. You know, I'm looking at all of these single triggers. Nothing was working. And because every day I had a migraine, I just didn't know where to go with it. And that's the biggest obstacle. They just don't know what to do. They need somebody to show them. So what would you say is the one thing a person can do to start this organic journey to heal, to, to being well from a migraine? Well, I would say the one thing you can do is first have hope it's possible. And then look at the first thing you can do to control your bucket. And that is why I start with stress. Look at your stress and do some stress relief techniques, lower your stress and then work from there. So the first thing is have hope and then go along with that is look at your stress and start there. And that's the first thing to do along your wellness journey because you're going to do yourself a huge favor. Not just with, just with migraines, but also high stress actually causes high blood sugar. High stress causes you to binge eat, which causes high blood sugar. High stress causes high blood pressure, which causes a lot of other health issues. So start with your stress. So have hope and start with managing your stress a little bit better. That, that makes, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so was there anything that I didn't ask that you think that I should have? No, I think you asked about everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I'm glad because I just, I want to make sure I don't miss everything, miss anything at all. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen here at the organic journey, we're building a thriving community that loves consuming content on wellness, natural and organic living. Um, this is your journey. And to find out more, um, about how you can apply these techniques that we learned today with Michelle, um, and reach out and connect with her on her Instagram page at encouragement.wellness.coach or connect with her on Facebook at Encouragement Wellness. Um, and I want to also mention that you have a, a free giveaway, um, a freebie yes. you started. Um, can you tell, the, um, tell our audience a little bit about that? Yes, I am very excited. I just actually published that free ebook um, probably about, about a week ago. So if you go to my website, www.encouragementwellness.com, I have five simple steps to reducing stress and it comes along with a bonus journal so you can actually start practicing and getting in the habit of doing these stress relief techniques so definitely go download that free ebook and enjoy reducing a little bit of stress it has some really great little tips in it well that's amazing thank you again i want to thank you so much for joining us and so be sure to get a copy of her free guide on her wellness on her website again encouragement wellness.com under free relief and with that, I want to thank you again, Michelle, uh, even with all these technical issues we were having. <laughs> like, there's like, yes. Now that I've got to um, lead together. But, you know, thank you for being such a trooper and sharing what you know and sharing with us. And I wish you um, much success. And I hope the audience um, learned as, just as much as I did today, because I really, really did, um, especially about my favorite foods. But you know, hey, whatever can get me to those those stress-free, wellness-free days, um, our wellness days is, is, is gonna be just as impactful. So thanks again, and um, I look forward to collaborating with you even more in the future.